One thing, uh, Secretary of State Pompeo is extremely busy, so if you have any question for him right now, could you do that? Because you know what I'd like to do? I'd like him to go back to the, the State, State Department, Department, or as they call it, you don't mind. The Deep State Department, you don't mind. I'd like to have him go back and uh, do his job. So does anybody have any question? Please, does anybody have any question? Please, does anybody have any question? Please. I'd like to ask you about the conflict in Yemen, but before that, I just need to ask you a few questions about official statements that President of the United States made this morning on his Twitter account. He said there is a criminal deep state, and as you know, Representative Nunes has said he's also going to investigate the State Department. Uh, do you believe there is a criminal deep state at the State Department? I, I don't. I haven't seen the comments from the president. I, I, I don't believe there's a, a deep state at the State Department. Thank you. Uh, you formerly served as CIA director. Do you believe uh, your colleagues at the CIA are part of the criminal deep state? You know, this, this term deep state has been thrown around. <laughs> um, I, I'd say this, the, the employees that worked for me at the CIA uh, nearly uniformly were aimed at achieving the president's objectives and America's objectives. Thank you. And that's your experience also when you interact with colleagues at the FBI and Department of Justice as well? Uh, yes. Uh, there, there are always exceptions to every rule. I've never led an organization that didn't have bad actors. Um, I don't think any government organization is exempt from having malfeasance as well. But, uh, but in general, you're confident that uh, the members of the various agencies are honoring their oaths to the United States Constitution? Yeah, yeah in, in general, yes, sir. Thank you. We're in a, we're in a live exercise here to get this right. We, we're, 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 we're in a live exercise here, here to get, to get this, this right. right. We, we, we're, in a, we're in a live exercise here to get this right. We guys here to get this right. We guys here to get this right. We guys here to get this right. We. This is not a drill soldier. This is a live project. You're good. For them to try to take a pandemic and seemingly hope that it comes here and kills millions of people so that they could end Donald Trump's streak of winning is a new level of sickness. The press was, 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 was covering their, their hoax of the day because they thought it would bring down the president. The reason you're paying so, you're seeing so much attention to it today is that they think this is going to be what brings down the president. That's what this is all about. Do you believe coronavirus is I, a I'm hoax not going to comment on what just others are saying. You, you, I'm I, just asking you, do you believe I, the I'm coronavirus telling, is a I'm hoax? I'm just telling you what the Secretary of State is doing. Do you believe the coronavirus is a hoax? We're working to keep people safe. You can't even answer that question. Yeah, it's, I mean, a very, it's not even look, a gotcha you're, question. You're, you're, do you believe the coronavirus is a hoax? It's a gotcha moment. It's not useful. Take, is take a coronavirus a, a hoax? Can you just answer that question? We're, we're taking like it seriously. The coronavirus being weaponized as yet another element to bring down Donald Trump. Most Americans hadn't heard the term deep state before Donald Trump's 2016 campaign. Now it pops up regularly in stories about routine government business. Just recently, the president accused his own Justice Department of being part of the deep state. The tricky thing is the deep state is largely undefined. The political Rorschach is highly subjective, truly living in the eye of the beholder. The term typically refers to an intra-government conspiracy. HuffPost puts it this way. Deep state implies a unified force deeply embedded in the republic that has its own agenda and the means to undermine the decisions of elected presidents and members of Congress. Its power derives from the control of the mechanisms of power and being invisible. Synonym, shadow government. 
Before the 2016 campaign, BillMoyers.com noted the term generally was used in reference to networks of entrenched government officials and various foreign governments. An example here is Pakistan. The country's intelligence agency and the military often operate independently of the country's elected leaders. Coups have been the result. Back here in the U.S., powerful federal bureaucrats certainly try to influence presidents from time to time, including with leaks to the press, writes Politico. But critics of the conspiracy point out their goals are piecemeal not organized across the vast bureaucracy. If by deep state you mean civil servants who keep the government on track as administrations come and go, then yes, it exists. It's debatable, though, to say the least, as to whether the deep state is the threat that right-wing blogger Mike Cernovich described. He said it would turn murderous. That's when Trump will be killed. They're going to kill us. They're going to kill him. They're going to kill everybody. Former Trump strategist Steve Bannon was one of the loudest proponents of the conspiracy theory. He referred to it as the administrative state and made its destruction a priority. Several leaders of the hard right, they've been in lockstep including Congressman Steve King and Trump friend Newt Gingrich. The deep state, the, bu the professional bureaucrats. And while the deep state concerns are not yet mainstream, some citizens are starting to buy in. An ABC News Washington Post poll out last year showed 28% say the deep state exists and it's a major problem. It was defined as military, intelligence, and government officials who try to secretly manipulate government policy. In the end, it might just come down to this. One person's dedicated career federal worker is another's furtive power usurper. The president had every right to talk about the Insurrection Act in the U.S. military. What I'm hearing from people is that there are some military brass this is uncomfortable for me to talk about, but you need to hear it because you need to be warned. And some civilian representatives of the military, undersecretary types and others, who are organizing together and talking about how they're gonna either talk the president out of or just simply not obey his orders if the president, God forbid, and again, as I said, it would be a very bad idea now. But if we were to lose an American city using the U.S. military, think about what I just told you. Folks, I've been doing this now. This is episode 1,266. Joe's been there with me from episode one. My wife's been married to me from episode one. I don't think I've ever told you something as serious as what I just told you. These are not second-rate garbage sources. These are legitimate, real people who are genuinely concerned that some, some upper-level people in our military are openly talking about defying the President of the United States. That's got a name. That's called a mutiny. What is this, Venezuela? You don't like the president's decisions about his constitutional authority to use our military to suppress an emergency situation? Then there's a solution for that. It's called an election. It'll be here in November. I'm not here to tell you who to vote for. You know who I'm voting for. I've been a supporter of the president, and I'll continue to. My vote's not a secret. I'm not telling you who to vote for. But the mere suggestion that the President of the United States is no longer the Commander-in-Chief and some band of military insiders is somehow... Do you know anybody who trusts the government anymore? There's a reason for that. And by the way, it's not just Democrats you should blame. The vast majority of the Russian collusion investigation occurred during the first two years of this administration. Who ran the government then? At the time, Republicans controlled both houses of Congress and every single committee by definition. They had the power to expose this hoax and to shut it down, but they did not. It's Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell and Richard Burr and so many of the other useless Senate Republicans. Total phonies. They didn't really do anything. Richard to Burr. Burr uh, he is calling uh, Don Trump Jr. back. Yes. Senator Burr, who's well respected, he doesn't want to be lied to. He wants to get to the bottom of what happened. The Republican Senator Richard Burr had served the president's son with a subpoena. Can you explain why the Republican would want to do that? Gowdy disputes Trump's spy claim. No, I think Gowdy's appearance was disgraceful. According to Gowdy, the FBI ran it by the book how the Americans would have wanted them to run the investigation. Really? Give, give me a break. You said, I am even more convinced that the FBI did exactly what Americans would want them to do. There was no spy. 
testimony. Have you seen any evidence of that? I have not. I would think you would want the FBI to find out whether or not there was any validity to what those people were saying. The FBI did exactly what my fellow citizens would want them to do. He says the FBI did exactly what we should want them to do. The number one question I get asked from Americans is why no one has gone to jail and been held accountable. It was Paul Ryan and Trey Gowdy that wouldn't give us that subpoena power. We didn't send out a single subpoena, not one. I supported the Mueller investigation because I didn't know. Senator, we're talking about a shredding of constitutional law due process that we would ever have. You say that Mueller is a good guy, right? That's been my experience, yes. And you'll do anything necessary to protect him from being uh, interfered with? Uh, absolutely. Well, and it's got, all been there. Where's Director Ray, though? I've got a lot of people yelling at me tonight. He's not doing his job. And you'll do anything necessary to protect him? Uh, absolutely. Somebody that every American should trust. Mr. Mueller. Bob Mueller, it was an excellent appointment. He, he will go wherever the facts lead him. He will have great uh, credibility. People want you to move on this, Senator. Yeah. Are you going to do it? Yeah, but I've told you and I'll tell you again. Total phonies who tell you they're representing you, but don't. Explain why they didn't really do anything to stop the derailment of America while it was in progress. Some key advisors around the president don't seem to understand this or the gravity of the moment. No matter what happens, they'll tell you, our voters aren't going anywhere. The trailer parks are rock solid. What choice do they have? They've got to vote for us. Jared Kushner, for one, has made that point out loud. No one has more contempt for Donald Trump's voters than Jared Kushner does, and no one expresses it more frequently. In 2016, Donald Trump ran as a law and order candidate because he meant it, and his views remain fundamentally unchanged today. But the president's famously sharp instincts, the ones that won him the presidency almost four years ago, have been since subverted at every level by Jared Kushner. This is true on immigration, on foreign policy, and especially on law enforcement. As crime in this country continues to rise, Jared Kushner has led a highly aggressive effort to let more criminals out of prison and back onto the streets. This is reckless. At this moment in time, it's insane. It continues to happen. The president seems to sense this. At times, he seems aware he's being led in the wrong direction. He often derides Kushner as a liberal, and that's correct, Kushner is. But Kushner has convinced the president that throwing open the prisons is the key to winning African-American votes in the fall, and that those votes are essential to his reelection. Several times over the past few days, the president has signaled that he would very much like to crack down on rioters. That is his instinct. If you've watched him, you believe it. But every time he has been talked out of it by Jared Kushner and by aides that Kushner has hired and controls. Kushner's assumption apparently is that African-American voters like looting. That is wrong. Normal Americans of all colors hate looting. Obviously, why wouldn't they hate looting? They're decent people. Thanks for coming on. I said uh, Israeli spy because Israel denies you are a spy, despite the U.S. jury uh, verdict that you acted for Israel. Tell me about being a spy and uh, why when you uh, talk about geopolitics, you're not fearful, more fearful of assassination. I live in Canada and I will, I wrote a book, it's all out there, and I hope for the best. Of course, it's a book that came out some years ago. Now, Jeffrey Epstein is dead. Now, uh, Ghislaine Maxwell, there are reports she's in Paris. You maintain that it was your employer, Robert Maxwell, owner of the Daily Mirror. You say that he was an Israeli agent, and uh, as was his daughter. He was not my employer. I would like to correct that. Okay. We worked together with him. And okay. uh, you say that his daughter, Ghislaine, also, though, worked for Israel, and it was Robert Maxwell who introduced Jeffrey Epstein to Ghislaine Maxwell way before the 1990s, as mainstream media is reporting. Correct. Um, uh, Mr. Epstein was introduced to Ms. Maxwell probably sometime in the 80s. And Mr. Maxwell also thought he might uh, be introducing a, a fellow to date his daughter. He tried to do a favor to his daughter find her a shidduch, as they say in Hebrew, a match. Okay, and that didn't really quite work out. I suppose what the most alarming allegations that you've been making are that the entire Epstein operation 
was a honey trap operation to entrap politicians, policymakers, celebrities, people in the media eye, basically to become Israel's assets. Correct. That uh, it became uh, basically an uh, intelligence operation to entrap uh, different politicians around. Tell me about what evidence you have for this. At this point, this this is all I can say that uh, that's uh, that's what it was. Because at the time. because the mainstream media narrative is. We don't know about Ghislaine Maxwell. She denies all wrongdoing. And basically, Epstein was a pedophile and uh, was a successful banker. He made lots of money and uh, he was a criminal pedophile and he died in a jail awaiting justice. That's the story. Nothing to do with Mossad, nothing to do with Israeli military intelligence, nothing to do with uh, Israel. Yeah, they would, uh, they would deny it. It's a real bad story. And they would deny it. But you know, he was put straight with the Israelis by uh, Robert Maxwell at the time, a military intelligence, and uh, started working there for them. I mean, I'm sure Israel's ambassador to London would deny that. Over here, obviously, Prince Andrew is a big story because he's supposed to be the Queen's favorite son. What do you think about Epstein's death? A lot of uh, people uh, suspect about it, although uh, it was ruled a suicide by New York's uh, chief medical examiner, despite Epstein's brother alleging it was murder. I was in that facility, exactly in that facility. It would almost be impossible to commit suicide there, unless you, you had outside help. Now, I'm not alleging that uh, Black Cube has anything to do with this. What do you know about Black Cube, a private Israeli intelligence company, which has reputedly been hired to intimidate people uh, chasing down the uh, Epstein story? I was not uh, in the intelligence service at this time. I really can't comment about that. How did you go today? Great. Harvey, why'd you hire Black Cube? Good days like this. Good days like this. Good days like this. Well, an Israeli former prime minister is now fielding the media frenzy surrounding the Harvey Weinstein sexual assault case. Ehud Barak's office has admitted to I24 News that he did provide the contact details of the Israeli security company Black Cube to the Hollywood heavyweight, which Weinstein allegedly used to muzzle journalists trying to expose sexual assault allegations against him. Now, it comes off the back of a report in The New Yorker which claims Weinstein hired two security agency firms, one of which was Black Cube to quiet those involved. Now, the organisation reportedly uses former Mossad agents as well as operatives from Israel's elite military and government intelligence units. R24 News has reached out to Black Cube and it has declined to comment. Joining me in studio, I24 News correspondent Jordana Miller. Jordana, first of all, talk us through briefly what these organisations were doing to the victims and the journalists trying to uncover these uh, cases. Right, well, I actually had a chance to talk to someone who is very close to the investigator the investigative work that was done so it comes from a good source but and they were basically able to confirm most of what was in that New Yorker piece and these agents are basically it reads like a spy novel they are sending their employees uh, as aliases and to impersonate for example a feminist uh, someone was introduced to Rose McGowan the actress and she befriended Rose basically to try to extract information find out about the allegations and she even got part of the book that Rose is writing about wow. these allegations the of rape. Of almost trying to help them with the case that's right it's uh, you know it's good old uh, spy work right. you know someone through a connection through another connection comes into your life you think they're a friend you think they have a common interest this woman for example said I run a nonprofit um, and I'd like you to be at the gala event and and can you be a part of this and right. befriended her over a period of months until she was able to get this information get it back to Weinstein now black Black uh, Cube says they don't take cases that have to deal with sexual harassment, um, but in this case, they did. It's a 
certainly seems like they did. And it ended up, you know, winding back. This is one Israeli connection. The next one, of course, is to the former prime minister, Ehud Barak, who seems to have uh, unwittingly given Weinstein this information, right. not knowing what was happening. He's now trying to distance himself. Uh, let's take a listen to what he said in his statement. More than a year ago, Mr. Barak was asked by Harvey Weinstein whether he is familiar with an Israeli security company which is capable of helping him with some business issues he is facing. Barak confirmed that the company that Weinstein has mentioned was probably Black Cube, and that is indeed working from Israel. Barak does not know the company or its managers personally, but he did provide Weinstein with its contact information. Until this morning, Barak was not aware that the company was hired by Weinstein. Neither did he know any of the purposes or activities it was hired for. Surely, Your Majesty, you're not telling me that the Jewish lobby in the United States pulls the strings of the presidency? Not entirely, but I think even a little too much, even for Israel interests. You think the Jewish lobby in the United States is too powerful for the interests of Israel? I think so. Sometimes they are deserving the interests of Israel because they are, they're pushing around too many people. Well, why would the President of the United States pay attention to that model? They are strong. Strong in what sense? They are controlling many things. Controlling what? Newspapers, medias, Your Majesty. Banks. Finances, and I'm going to stop there. Well, now wait just a second. You really do believe that the Jewish community in the United States is that powerful? They make the media reflect their view of foreign policy? Mm -hmm. Yes. They do not report, we do not report honestly? Don't uh, mix things, please. I don't say the media. I say in the media they have people. Not the entire media. Some newspapers will only reflect their, their news, yes. No. The New York Times, for instance, is owned by the Salzburger family, who are Jewish. Are you suggesting that the New York Times is biased in its treatment of the question of Zionism, Israel's existence, the United States' relationship with the Arab world? I will have to put all the articles of the New York Times written on this subject and draw the conclusion. You can put this to the computer and it will answer you. What you're saying is that yes, you do believe. Well, let's wait for the answer of the computer. Washington Post. The same. The networks. Yes. I must say you are speaking with your characteristic candor. Yes, if you like. I try to be candid, I have always been. Welcome back, everybody. Well, this is Blackout Tuesday. Do mm -hmm. you get into that as well as uh, celebrities stepping up? Yeah, celebrities stepping up. Let's talk about There is a lot happening, and there is a lot to kind of understand in what's going on. So what is Blackout Tuesday? This is the uh, music industry coming together, artists as well as the, you know, the labels uh, coming out and saying, you know what, we're not going to promote music today. We're not going to do our regular business. We're not going to do shows. You know, we want to all stand together and take time to reflect, take time to kind of step back and listen and assess, and then, you know, try and create some ideas on what we should do going forward. So uh, many people taking part in this is on social media. I've just po I posted earlier today, uh, and you're seeing picture. This picture right here is what it is. It's a black square uh, to take part and kind of show some solidarity. Celebrities like Drake, uh, Rihanna, Dak Shepard, Kerry Washington, others are posting this. I saw, you know, Chris Bosch. Uh, my friend who works in media in the States, Cabby, he's, you know, all of us posting this uh, to show solidarity for this. Now, Quincy Jones wrote on Instagram to kind of really expand on it. He said, it's hard to know what to say because I've been dealing with racism my entire life. That said, it's rearing its ugly head right now. And by God, it's time to deal with it once and for all. And, you know, he was another person that said, let's have conversations about this after mm -hmm. we've taken this time out today to reflect. So one thing to know if you are wanting to support this, you want to show solidarity, do not use the hashtag Black Lives Matter. The reason being that hashtag is used to show resources and have resources for people. Uh, so use the hashtag Blackout Tuesday if you want to support that way. You don't want to kind of clog up what people are looking for when it comes to resources during the Black Lives mm -hmm. Matter, you know, um, 
I guess, words and, and things like that important with that situation. hashtag. Yeah, there's yeah. definitely important ones. So Def Jam Recordings, Interscope, Sony Music, Columbia, uh, and more record labels are all taking part of this. The other Blackout Tuesday that people have been talking about is the No Shopping one. That is July 7th. So this is not to be confused with that. This is the entertainment industry, uh, music industry specifically, stepping up to say something. Now, we mentioned Drake in there. Hi, I'm Kim Gottlieb. I'm Jewish and I'm gay. And my life changed when my rabbi came over to me one day and said, are you into leather? Now I enjoyed the double entendre, but what he was actually referring to was, was I interested in starting to put on tefillin, which are these two boxes which have little prayers in them. One goes on the hand and the other on the head. The one that goes on the hand goes on the non-dominant hand because we believe that the dominant hand is the hand that you use being in the world. But the non-dominant hand is the one that relies on unseen forces. So it goes on the muscle and it's wound around seven times. It's wound around seven times. It's wound around seven times. And Once at the Grand Mosque, pilgrims have to walk seven times counterclockwise around the central shrine and kiss the black stone on each circuit. What are Saturn's rings? They are not visible from Earth with the unaided eye. Thus, they were first observed after the invention of the telescope. There are seven rings in total, categorized by scientists using letters A through G. Hey, let's look at where the names for the days of the week came from. Let's perspective, Sunday makes a lot more sense to be the start of the week. The day starts with the sun rising, and if your week starts with Sunday, then the week starts with a sunrise too. As if you couldn't guess, the name Sunday means the day of the sun, believed to have come from the old English sunadag. So if Sunday is the day of the sun, then I'm sure it's easy to see where Monday comes from. Monday of course being named in reference to the moon, with Monday meaning the day of the moon, coming of course from the old English English Mundarg. So if Sunday and Monday are named after the sun and the moon, then what are the rest of the days named after? Well, and finally we have Saturday, which along with Thursday is pretty easy to see where this name comes from. That of course being the planet and the god Saturn, coming from the old English Saturdag, which of course means day of Saturn. In some ways this is an act of submission, of appreciating that there's a power greater than ourselves. We stop at this point, then put on the one for the head. Our head is so full of thoughts that sometimes we stray away from what is good and best for the world. But it's interesting that it's placed on the point that the Ayurvedics refer to as the third eye, which relates to intuition. So I wonder whether our rabbis thought of that when they came up with the design. The eye of Saturn, like a giant eye for the giant planet, Saturn's great vortex at its north pole appears to stare back at Cassini as Cassini stares at it. Measurements have sized the eye at a staggering 1,240 miles, 2,000 kilometers, across with cloud speeds as fast as 330 miles per hour, 150 meters per second. You are looking at the top of the Salesforce Tower in San Francisco. A change.org petition is currently underway to display an image from the Lord of the Rings. It's called... That's cool. Okay, I've never actually seen it written before. The Eye of Sauron. That's kind of how they said it, right? Right, Sauron. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. I, I didn't read the books, clearly. <laughs> I just saw the movies. Well, it would just be for Halloween. More than 2,500 people have signed the petition. Curb San Francisco reached out to Salesforce CEO Mark Benioff. He says he has no control over the tower's display because the building is owned by Boston Properties. Empire State Building siren lights creep out New York as the Midtown skyscraper's spire was lit up in red with a siren-like effect that many New Yorkers found unnerving. Nothing to calm New York City like, 
the Eye of Sauron in Midtown Manhattan, the new Mordor of Middle Earth.